Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be starting episode 5 in our new series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to D2R Modding. And we're going to be going over some of the newer text edits that are available with Diablo 2 Resurrected that were not previously uh, kind of available to us. Um, now, as a reminder, we are going to continue to dive in deeper and deeper on these topics, especially as we start discussing JSON edits, particles, texture applications, all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, so if you are liking the content, uh, please don't be afraid to like or subscribe. It is appreciated. Um, but with all that boring stuff out of the way, let's jump right into what we'll be learning today. Uh, so the first thing we'll be taking care of is learning how to spawn red portals. Uh, these red portals can take you to essentially any level you want using a cube recipe. Um, then we'll show you how you can show the item levels um, of items next to their name. Uh, this can be useful for bail scalers or other things like that. Um, and then uh, kind of in relation to that, it can also be used to change the item used to spawn D clone. Um, these will be done very similarly and we'll kind of cover them together. Uh, and then finally, we will show you how to change what, what, what ugh, can't talk, what weapons mercs can equip. Uh, this was a new change introduced in patch 2.4, so we wanted to make sure to add that for you here. Um, so the first thing we'll be needing is the actual uh, files. Um, so to grab those, we're going to go into Data, Global, and Excel. And uh, the three files we'll need for this video are going to be cubemain.txt. This is going to let us add our new cube recipe. And for item levels and changing the declone item, um, you're going to grab whatever text files you need for the type of item you're trying to edit. Um, and what I mean by that is if you want a specific unique item to spawn declone, then you're going to want to grab unique items.txt. Um, if you are trying to show item levels of all weapons, then you're going to want to grab weapons.txt. Um, obviously, if you're kind of showing item levels of every item in the game, then you might want to grab weapons.txt, unique set, miscellaneous.txt, as well as armor.txt. Um, so again, just grab what you need. Um, we've been editing a hand axe in both episodes three and four, uh, so we'll just kind of continue that trend here and grab weapons.txt. Um, for the Merc equip, um, we're going to go ahead and be able to change that now in monstats.txt, and that's what controls the mercenary kind of itself. Um, so with those files, um, we're, all we need now is a program to edit it with. Um, what I'm going to recommend is AFJ Sheet Editor. Uh, this is a program available on our website under the Utilities section. Uh, the link is in the video description below. Um, there are other programs you can technically use, but I just strongly recommend this, and it is what we'll be using in this video. Um, but with all that uh, kind of set and out of the way, we are ready to edit. So the first thing we'll do is for our red portal spawning, we're going to open cubebane.txt and get started on these. I'm going to close all my uh, other windows here. There we go. And uh, for that, uh, all we need to do is we're going to lock this top row just to um, make the headers e easy to see as we scroll down. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add a new row here by just right clicking and selecting that. Um, so we do want this new portal recipe to enable. Uh, I'm not going to bother giving it a name and all that stuff right now. Um, we do want it for version 100, which just means ladder. Uh, I believe you know most people nowadays are using the ladder version of Diablo 2. Um, for the number of inputs, we're just going to set this for one, but obviously uh, you can set this to whatever you want for your specific recipe. Um, and for the input to use, we're going to tell it to use TSC, which is the item code for a, a scroll of town portal. Um, so essentially, when you cube one scroll of town portal, it's going to open a red portal to whatever level we specify. Um, so for that, um, to understand kind of where it's going to take us, if we open levels.txt, um, we want to pay special attention to this ID field here. Um, so for our purpose, we're going to go ahead and edit, uh, or we're going to have this portal take us to Catacombs 4. So we're going to make it like a, a cheat way to get to Indarial. Um, and if we see here for Catacombs 4, the ID on that is ID 37. Um, so I'm going to go back, and for our actual output um, in our cube uh, recipe, we're going to use red space portal, comma, QTY for quantity, equals 37. Um, and so uh, it might 
look a little funky as far as how it's formatted, uh, but this is going to tell it to open up a red portal to ID 37, uh, for which for our case is Catacombs 4. Um, now, as far as the recipe codes, we're all done, um, but again, customize the recipe however you want. Uh, this is just an example of how to use it. Um, so we're all set as far as our cube recipe goes. Um, for our item levels and our spawning item for declone, we're going to open weapons.txt in this example. And we're going to take our good old friend, the hand axe here, and uh, take a look at that. So with the hand axe selected, if we scroll over, um, the column we're looking for is called show level. And in vanilla, it's currently under the AF uh, value here, uh, AF column. And all we need to do is change that zero to a one. And now hand axe will always show the item level um, for that item. So again, if you're trying to track down bail skillers or something like that, um, that's a good, easy way to, to enable that. Um, and then related to uh, show item levels, so if we scroll all the way over to the end, we can see this Diablo clone weight field. Um, and if we want to enable hand axes to um, spawn D clone, then we can just set a one there. And now our hand axe can also spawn D clone if we sell it to a vendor. So we've made all our changes in weapons.txt. We'll go ahead and save that. And finally, we'll show you how we can change Merc, uh, what weapons Mercs can equip. Um, so for that, we're going to go and open up monstats.txt. And we're going to lock the headers. And we're going to just do a search for everybody's favorite hireling, the Act 2 hireling. Um, and we'll go ahead and select that. And then we can lock that uh, row as well, that column, I'm sorry. Um, so with Act 2 hireling selected, we're going to keep scrolling over until we see this field here, which currently in vanilla is CU, CV, and CW. Um, so as the column headers might suggest, this controls not only what item types the mercenaries can use, but whether they can use two-handed weapons or not. Um, so if we look under the right arm item type, we'll see that currently an Act 2 mercenary can use item type SPPL and nothing in the left arm type, left arm item type, sorry. Um, so if we look in the cache folder and we open up item types.txt, we can actually see what this SPPL means. Um, so if we look here, we can see that some new additions in 2.4 are these two entries here, um, SPPL, meaning spears and pole arms. So that makes sense for the Act 2 mercenary. That's what he's using. Um, we can also see one of the new entries for blades. Um, obviously, there's a lot of previous entries for you know things like axes, knives, you know all that stuff, and then all melee weapons in general. So you can really kind of change this how you want, but that is uh, an indicator of where this, um, where that text file is looking for those item types. So because we want to be difficult and make something that is as derpy as the rest of the mod so far. We're going to change an Act 2 mercenary to use a blade instead of a spear. So now we can use like swords and knives. Um, and why not? We can, he can use it, whoops, he can use it in both um, arms. So now he's a dual wielding blade user uh, for an Act 2 mercenary. Obviously, it makes no sense, but hey, why not? Let's do it. Um, and then we'll go ahead and leave this blank so he can use two handed swords. Uh, but let's say we wanted him specifically to be uh, a dual wielder, um, then you could put a one in that field to stop him from being able to use uh, two handed weapons. Um, so we'll just go ahead and leave it as with the blade edits and save that. So we've now uh, spawned our new level. We've changed, we've added item uh, level display onto our hand axe. We've also enabled the hand axe to spawn D clone, and then finally let our Merc use dual wielding swords instead of a single spear. Um, so with all those changes done, let's go ahead and launch the mod, uh, see if I broke anything. All right, so the first thing we'll take a look at is that hand axe. So we should see the item level in parentheses now, and we do. Uh, so again, you can see that 12 um, in the name there, that's showing that it's item level 12 hand axe. Um, and if we look at some of the other items that you know the character has, none of the other items will show that um, indicator because we did not enable that in .txt. Um, and similarly, 
Um, if I now go to sell this hand axe to uh, a vendor, it should now spawn D club. So there we go. We have our message. Um, obviously, if I went to the next super unique, I would, you know, see Declon and we could fight him for Annie, uh, but just a naked character. I'm not going to really bother with that. Um, as far as the mercenary goes, we can see here, uh, at least visually, because of how the JSONs and stuff are, he still looks like he's using a spear, um, but we can have him equip dual wielding swords, no problem now. Um, now he is a dual wielding blade user. Um, so you can kind of mess with that stuff how you'd like, um, get it working, you know, to your preference. Um, now, as far as the recipe, this one does have some limits. I'm going to explain that in just a second here. Um, so if we try to use our new recipe, that's going to take us straight to uh, Catacombs Level 4. Um, if I try to use that recipe now um, in Act 2, it's not going to work. I'm just getting the I can't use this yet kind of error. Um, so let me show you what's going on as far as that goes. Um, so in Resurrected, we have a new file here called actinfo.txt, and this file defines the different acts, um, what levels are included in them, as well as like the waypoints and stuff. Um, and we can see here that if we look at the um, Act 1 uh, kind of section, so here it is for Act 1, we can see it defines the kind of starting and ending levels and, and things like that. So basically, as soon as Act 2 starts, Act 1 is over, as far as this file is concerned. So because our recipe um, goes to level 37, which is in Act 1, we cannot travel from another act to another act. It's just uh, one of the limits of this recipe. So you can go from anywhere in Act 1 to anywhere in Act 1, or anywhere in Act 3 to anywhere in Act 3, but you cannot go from Act 1 to Act um, so with that said, hopefully that makes a little more sense. There is some editing you can do to that actinfo.txt, but unfortunately it's not as uh, straightforward as just uh, changing one of the values and now you can kind of go anywhere. So that'll be covered in a later topic. Um, but now that we're in Act 1, if we try to use that recipe, it'll work just fine. Um, we can go straight to Act 4, uh, do our little cheater method to Endariel, um, whatever we'd like to do there. Um, but those are some of the kind of limits um, and edits that are new to Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care.